colored content exclusive. Hi, it's Victoria, and I'm here with Erica McCracken, the creator of 30 Below. Yes, 30 Below. Thank you. How are you today? I'm well, I'm well. How about yourself? I'm okay, no complaints. So I have a few questions to ask you about the series. Okay. So what inspired you to create 30 Below? Well, I was in my mid to late 20s, probably 27, 28 ish. And I noticed that a lot of my friends were going through this like mini midlife crisis. Um, and as we know, a midlife crisis is probably around 40, 50, but they're 20 something like, oh, I'm not married. I'm not in my dream job. Um, I'm not in my dream location, all these other things. And I'm like, this is something real. and I've never seen anything like it on television. So I just started writing and I said, well, wow, maybe there's something to this. And I ended up writing 10 full episodes. Um, just with different comedic twists and turns about this mini midlife crisis that we kind of experienced in the late 20s. And I wanted to do it from a male perspective because we know as women, um, we're kind of ostracized in the media as we want to have kids, we want to be married, like all these other things. But men go through the same things. Maybe not with the family part, but kind of with that as well, but also with the career and all these other things. Because I don't know if you've been to college, but it's like you graduate and we assume the world is our oyster. Like, yes, I'm gonna go out and get this six figure job. I'm about to be on Wall Street. I'm about to be wherever it is that you wanna be Hollywood. And you realize that that's not the reality of it. And um, it's a sobering reality, but it's also a wonderful thing because you learn so much throughout the transition. So that kind of inspired me to write it and to do a different perspective. Like we have a lot of women speaking, but what about a man's perspective? So I had one of my um, good guy friends just come with me. We met at a Starbucks and we just kind of hashed out different scenarios, I just started talking to him and saying, so give me something that you've experienced. Give me something your friends experienced. And I kind of drew off of that. And that's how it kind of came about. I mean, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I went to college and that's exactly what happened to me. And I think a few other friends and we're still going through it. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of past 20 <laughs> in my 20s. But um, yeah, when you get to a certain age, you're like, wow, I'm going to do this. I thought mm -hmm. I was going to live a diff in a different world. You, you watch these shows on TV exactly. Exactly, and it's going to be easy. And it's not. It's right. not what it's cracked up to be, especially if you want to be a creative person, if you want to do anything in film, music, fashion, mm -hmm. even media, PR. It's mm -hmm. not what you thought it was. Right. And it kind of led to my next question. So you already kind of played on it. I was going to say, Montana, the male lead in the show, he is kind of clueless. And I was wondering why you chose a male instead of a female. Um, but you kind of played on that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so why, why, so it was, it's kind of a comedy. Mm -hmm. so why, why choose to make it a comedy and not a drama and have him go through all those twists? Well, I wanted people to laugh at it and almost laugh at yourself. Like I want you to, to watch this and be like, oh man, I went through that. Oh, and it's funny. Like, how crazy was I to believe, like, the first episode, he meets a young lady, thinks she's awesome, he doesn't have any money. His friend devises this scheme of drinking um, ice water and, and thinking that it's vodka and something else. And, of course, at the time, you're like, yo, this, was, this is great, this is awesome. It's, it's, it'll work. And then you realize it's not going to work. And it's okay. So I wanted people to have the opportunity to laugh at themselves because, as you know, the world is serious enough. It's drama enough it's sad enough it's tragic enough give people an opportunity and a reason to laugh about something and especially there's nothing to me more awesome especially as a creative person than to laugh at yourself um because the world is too serious as it is so and then the whole tony montana like i just tony usually is a male name so i was like well this would be even better to kind of flip the roles in this instance so yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But that's so I mean, for people who haven't watched, when they do watch, they'll totally understand now. Mm -hmm. Um and I understand. So that's cool. Well, thank you. I hope I didn't give too much away. Yeah. I mean it's only the first episode. So you know, watch it everyone, then you'll understand exactly what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest struggle creating the series? Um, resources. You have all these great ideas, but it costs money. And I knew that, like in today's society, especially when it comes to media and, and pilots and stuff, people want to see it. People aren't really reading 
60 page scripts anymore. Even these scripts might have been 15 pages. Um, no one really wants to read it. They want to see what you invested into it. So initially, I don't have a film background at all, didn't major in it. I was an English major and I worked a corporate job. So I had no idea of where to go. Um, and then I spoke to a guy who actually moved here. He used to write for girlfriends. And he just said, you know what? When I was coming up, we had to enter film festivals. We had to have these portfolios. And now you can reach thousands and millions of people with your phone or with your laptop or with your computer. So just create, 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 and put it out there and just kind of see what happens. So I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. But then I said, well, where do I go? What do I do? Who do I call? Um, and I just started just Googling um pilots, films, and I actually had a few friends who were in film school. So I said, well, do you have a few friends who wouldn't mind helping me out? Well, I had to pay them, but <laughs> um, <laughs> producing something, you know, I am an entrepreneur. I'm kind of green to everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm the resource of this. So I'm paying for everything. But if I can find someone who believes in my vision, um, we can go from there. And luckily the people I found, I, I did a documentary maybe – at this point, it probably was a year prior, um, titled TikTok, The Black Woman's Timeline. And he actually moved back to Denver, but he had a few friends here in Atlanta who um, face front productions, I believe. And they you know, saw the vision. I told them what my budget was. They said, okay, we'll work within this. And initially I wanted to shoot all 10 episodes, um, but I didn't have the resources for that. So he said, let's just start with five. Pick the best five that you think will really um, grab people and we'll start there. So that's what I did. So, I mean, it takes sacrifice because um, we we find money for the things we want to find money for. And when it's your passion, you kind of have to, you have to invest in yourself. If you're not going to invest in yourself first, who else is going to? So I would tell anyone, if you have to eat out less, whatever it is, ask somebody. Um, they have GoFundMes, which I think, yeah, I don't, I'm not saying I'm against GoFundMe, but some people use it just for every little thing. Um, and just making sure that if you do ask for money, Find something to give them in return because um, it's not all about you. People are going to invest in you. Maybe give them a free episode. I don't know. Dedicate something to them. Do something. So I've learned that in the process. Like you can ask if that's your avenue of getting resources, but try to offer something else in return, whatever you have. So um, that was my biggest obstacle. But once after I kind of figured out, OK, this is the budget that I can use and I've narrowed it down to five. It was a lot more. Um, it was just more sizable. It wasn't so overwhelming. Um, so I would tell anyone out there who, if you have a vision, you, you have a writer, go to these different schools that you have in your area. There's a film school. There's someone else who will believe in your dream. If you, you know, if, if you talk about it well, if you believe in it, someone else will believe in it as well and give you a helping hand. But you're going to have to pay them. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're so free. You're gonna have to pay, I know that. Yeah, you're going to have to pay. But you may not have to pay, you know, you're not paying. Holiday. Right, right. So. Oh, that's inspiring. Like that you did it without any knowledge because you were an English major. And I think a lot of people sometimes don't see, they see, uh, they have an idea and they're like, how can I accomplish this? Mm -hmm. And they have no avenues. They don't think they have avenues and they do. So I think that's totally inspiring to anyone who wants to pursue anything creatively. That You know, we have the computer, we can Google anything and we can figure it out. Absolutely. And relationships, you never know who knows who knows who. So if Really put as women, especially I read, um, gosh, I forgot the author. She's famous, but lean in. And she talked about as women, how we kind of dumb ourselves down a little bit, you know, as men will say, yes, I do. You ask a man, what do you do? I do this, 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 and this, this, this. As a woman, we're like, oh, all right. Okay. Well, you write what? Um, so I've learned to really sell myself more. So if you're a woman out there, don't be afraid to tell people what you do and you never know who can connect to. Cause with all my other projects, with my book, I've just told someone that I'm a, I'm a writer and they say, what do you write? And then I tell them I write this. Oh, I know an author coach. I know a publisher. So just kind of put yourself out there and don't limit yourself. Like oftentimes we can talk ourselves out of doing anything because we feel like we, like you said, we don't have the knowledge or the know-how um, or the experience or the connections to kind of get where we want to go. So just don't talk yourself out of it. I've been there. <laughs> Very inspirational. I need you to be like on my back, in my ear, and just be my motivational coach right now. We'll talk about it later, though. <laughs> <laughs> so being a media maker of color, how has the digital media, like, really changed? How, how has digital media really been a game changer, you feel, for the Black community? I feel like people are now interested in our stories like we are. Um, 
or mainstream media. Um, we had a time with a different world and uh, Living Color and Martin and Living Single and all these great shows. And then it was kind of like a drought. We had a few shows here and there, but you didn't see those inspirational shows that made you want to go to college, want to have a family, want to pursue a business and things like that. So I think now we're kind of getting back into that. You see so many female directors. You have the Ava DuVernay's and the Mar Barker Kills and the Shonda Rhimes. And it's just inspiring to me. And, and the Issa Rae's, like, they're out there saying, you know what, we have a story. It deserves to be told. And there's an audience for it. And I think for a long time, people assumed that there was nobody who wanted to watch it. And I think what I've learned as a writer is people can relate more to things that are like them. Um, sometimes we think there has to be this abstract, drawn out thing. And we like those things too as well, but people can relate to things that like, oh, she looks like me. Oh, she had the same problem that I do. And how can I solve that problem through her? Um, they look at it, because you know, and black people, we don't like to go to, you know, we like to go to church and pray everything. And that's good. That church is there, but we don't like to go to counseling. And sometimes TV is your counselor. Like if they go through a similar situation, like, oh, I remember when uh, Moesha was at the prom and she was faced with this and you kind of, it's, it's crazy, but that happens often. Um, so I think we use media as so much more than entertainment and we have to really um, be responsible with that. It's not just entertainment anymore. Sometimes it's, you know, different world help raised me in the sense of my parents didn't go to college. So that was, you know, the Mr. Gaines and, and the Dwayne's and the Whitley's and everything. Those were like my older brothers and sisters in college. So I learned through them. So we have to really use it as an educational tool as well as entertainment. So I think that shift has been amazing. These movies, these shows, um, and I think even life stories, people are interested in people's lives now. Um, and I hate that it's usually after they die or something to that effect because they can't really speak to it anymore. Um, but I think people are just, documentaries are what I love and what I produce as well. And I love the fact that it's a sneaky way to educate people. Um, because I can learn about someone who's way in Nebraska somewhere and I'm in Georgia and learn how they live and be connected to that. And I just think that that's amazing. So I think the whole shift as a minority um, of color and a woman of color, being a director, like growing up, that's something, or we had Debbie Allen. We had Debbie Allen growing up, but outside of that, there wasn't too many other women that we can kind of point to. So now that I, the, the list that I've named you recently, like that to me is just astonishing. So it gives me hope that I'm gonna be amongst the ranks of hopefully of one of these women one day telling amazing stories and educating people. So. Like, I think this is our time. If nothing else, this is our time. So we really need to take advantage of it. So write and direct and act and do all those other things. And if you don't know, you know, teach yourself and find someone who's doing it as well. That's the one thing I would tell anyone is to find a mentor. Um, I've had, mine have been male mentors. And I'm hopefully I can be that mentor to someone else as I continue to learn. But find someone who's doing it. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. It takes too much time. Um, so find somebody else who's doing it. I hope I answered your question. I know I was all around the world. But. No, it was all around the world, but I think it was useful to different people. You know, you were speaking about different things. Um, just listening, I was totally not in my head because, you know, on Google Hangouts, if you say anything, then it goes to the other person. But I was totally not in my head throughout what you were saying. One, as it being TV being for counseling. And I think that is important that we take the responsibility. Um, someone was telling me, like, part of the network so I have my own web series, but I also have this network, Color Content, which is this um, the interview is for. And it's to create like create a platform for web series of color for people who created web series. And someone was like, you have such a big responsibility. Like you have to continue this. You have to stay positive. And the messages that you represent and you tell this, you know, tell these stories because people are looking at you now. Mm -hmm. And so when you're saying it, I'm like, that's so true. Yes. So yeah, you went all around the world, but you answered the question. Good, 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 good. What's one message that you want people to take from your web series? One message I want people to take from 30 Below is it's going to be okay. Like, it's whatever it is, it's going to be fine. I use a lot of the scenarios that people will see as a way to poke fun, but at the end, it's going to be fine. Like, you know, the past, someone told me that when I was going through something really rough, like, you know, you're going to be okay. And he was like, hmm, yeah, you just but I'm like, it's so true. Like as long as you're living, you're breathing, 
Um, even with Tony Montana, all the trials and tribulations of life, I hope that people realize it's going to be okay and they can just enjoy the moment. Sometimes we're so in a rush to get all the way to here that we miss being in the present and living in the moment. So I hope that people know, I guess it's two things, two goals. It's going to be fine and to live in the moment because you don't get these moments back. Um, mm -hmm. These green moments, the moments where you don't have a dollar for something to drink or um, trying to give away all the episodes. Um, I don't want to say anything else. I want people to watch the rest of it. But just like it's going to be okay. Like it's going to be okay. Live in the moment. You're going to get to where you're going. It's all the process. And the only way you can appreciate the process is if you live in it. Um, and I hope that because I'm a little older now and I'm, a, I'm above 30. And just thinking about my 20s, 20s and all the stuff that you thought that you knew, um, that you thought was going to happen, um, where you're supposed to be, like all these things. And I look back and I'm like, I really didn't know anything. But I've enjoyed the ride. Like I've really enjoyed it's I can look back and I can give people some real stories. Like, yo, I remember when my first job, my birthday, I had fifteen dollars to eat lunch. And I was like, Yes, yes, I got money. I got like that. And my coworker, my boss was like, Why are you so happy? And he gave me twenty dollars. Like, as funny as it was, I'm like, What do you mean? I have I have a job, I have fifteen dollars. And he's like, You're happy about fifteen dollars. And yes. Like, generally, like, I'm happy that I have it. Like, you know, I don't know when you graduated, but the economy was so, I'm meeting people now st just starting to get jobs and get on their feet and graduated in 2008. So, like, it's different from, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. As soon as you came out, you were guaranteed that the market is different. But either way, it's going to be fine. It's not, it's, none of it was in vain. So I hope that people can just laugh at these moments and enjoy them. Um, and don't try to rush it. We try to rush life so much that it, you, you miss it sometimes yeah i think you know it was anything you, you think okay even in our 30s i'm thinking you know i'm in my 30s i think i know everything probably when i get to 40 i'm gonna look back and be like wow i could have did this differently or oh i wish i enjoyed it more so 20s you do learn a lot and in your 30s you can really reflect so far this is what i'm saying so right um, at one i'm like wow but i can say i enjoyed like enjoy it like i think the misconception is you graduated 22 when you're supposed to be at this other ma magical place by 30. like you really only been out the house for eight years if that and by mid-20s it's like three or four years so you're expected to just run hit the ground running immediately and that's just not how it works which is cool it's fine I would love to go back to college and tell people like you're probably not gonna make if you do god bless you but if you don't you're just like the rest of us and you're fine <laughs> you're exactly. gonna be right i think most of us are struggling and didn't expect where we are now um but i think you can't tell people they have to experience it even if you tell them That's they're true. still gonna be like i got this i know what i'm doing mm -hmm. I prepared for this. I've studied for this. Okay, well, life is one of those things that you just can't, you just got to live it. Exactly, I agree. So this is the final question. What? So the series has been out for a while. You have the five episodes. What can people look forward to seeing from you next? An array of things. Um, I ran and grabbed my book, but this is my new memoir. Hope you can see it, titled Altercation my story of forgiveness and it talks about um a broken engagement and how from your pain you can actually get to your purpose and i think a lot of people just assume that you know pain is pain they deserve it what's going to happen but it can forgiveness can prevent you from getting to your purpose if i wouldn't have forgave my ex-fiance i would have never known that this book was in me and i would have never written it and realized that i am an author a writer and a speaker like all these amazing things um, so through forgiveness, I hope to help people make themselves whole again, because I think there's a lot of people walking around with just holes, just walk, you know, you're, you're functioning, but you're not at your highest level. So this is one thing. So it's out now. It's on Amazon. If you want an official copy, um, you can email info.mylegacy at gmail.com for an autograph copy, but it is on Amazon altercation with an A. Um, I have written a pilot for a show titled the life. And it actually speaks to what we were talking about as far as there's, there's four um, college age. Well, they just graduated college. They are in Atlanta and they're living the life or at least the life that they think they're supposed to live. 
So it's kind of it's where girl before girlfriends and right after different world. So it's like the best the best marriage in both of those um, shows. And it kind of just speaks to like I said, kind of what Thirty Below is, but more in a drama fashion than in a comedic form. I'm trying to think what else. Um, working on speaking and just traveling with altercation. I just came out April 25th and it's been doing really, really well. So I really want to travel up and down wherever I can. Speak to women at churches, conferences, colleges, everywhere. Just about the power of forgiveness and how necessary it is for your purpose. So it's a lot. Well, good stuff. I know they all sound great. <laughs> I'm just going to watch it and I will check out the book. So I think everyone else should. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll chat with you later. And thank you so much for um, letting me interview you. No, first of all, if you have not been on YouTube, the color content, please join. Thank you so much for doing something for so many minority um, writers and producers who just want to get their content out there. And now we have a channel and a resource to do that. So thank you so much. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I mean, I see this is just like the starting point. So I'm excited just doing this and hopefully I can build and make you guys proud out there. So yeah, I'm in on the ground floor. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Erica. Right, thank you. Bye. Bye.